Okay, Saints news and who that's from all over the world. This is Kyle T. Mosley with the Saints news radio crew and the Bayou Blitz podcast. I'm here with Bob Rose of the Bayou Blitz and Canal Street Chronicles as well as SI.com. And we have Scott Hamilton from the Panthers team channel over at SI.com as well. What's going on, guys? <laughs> what the NFL officiating is many, infinitely many in one. <laughs> yeah, well, there will be a sequel. We just don't know. <laughs> If we need to have this type of sequel again, man, uh, I was having heart palpitations <laughs> and nerves, uh, some anxiety. Uh, Bob, how about yourself? How did you feel? <laughs> Go ahead. Scott, how do you feel about this? Right. Wow, that's a, a good insight as well, because when I took a, a screenshot of that, uh, you can tell when he was going after the ball, and he, and I believe Allen just kind of moved slightly to the left, and it looked like he was hitting Allen. But, you know, all in all, man, I, I just have to, to really question what's going on in the league. Look, we've been over this time and time again over the net past several years. People have been calling for full-time officiating, correct? And you heard on the broadcast where – Sean Payton is calling for a panel of guys to be in New York during these games to be able to make decisions instead of probably one guy is up there doing it himself. <clears throat> the question is why with all the billions of dollars, the national football league has generated and will continue to generate. Why is it necessary not to have full-time officiating?
Hmm. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Um, let's start off with the early ons of the game. The Saints came out. Uh, they had the first drive, first time all season long. Bob, that we got a first touchdown on the first drive. Man, what did you think about what was going on? Scott, what were you thinking when you saw the Saints going down and putting early points up on the board? Yeah, definitely. You started to wonder exactly what was going on with the Saints because uh, Kyle Allen, he came back, got a little confidence. Uh, he threw the big old bomb, and wow, before you know it, they they were on the board. Looks like the Saints were going to take care of business, but, <laughs> man, I, I started thinking as a Saints fan, okay, like you said, Scott, you've seen this before. I've seen it many a year <laughs> with this team <laughs> that uh, we allow people to get back into games. Bob, what was happening there? Why do you think the defense was uh, having these breakdowns? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Not only that, they they were not finishing the plays. 
the techniques again were faltering a little bit in the defensive backfield. Uh, you saw PJ Williams get turned around a couple of times on both of those big plays. Um, I, I just believe, and, and you know, he's not Marshawn Lattimore, right? The Saints are going to have to really pay attention to if we do not get a chance to re sign Eli Apple, what other talents are going to be available out there during the off season to be able to bring in or do we um, draft somebody else at a premium to be able to fill in at those cornerback slots because we are really going to be gashed if we don't have somebody second to Marshawn Lattimore and Lattimore's continued uh, injuries on with, especially with his hamstring are uh in a better word, nagging concern of mine. Scott, look, you have to be proud of how Kyle Allen really handled himself, right? Sure was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not only that, uh, look, both of those quarterbacks were highly efficient as well, right? Look at Breeze, 30 of 39, and Allen was 23 of 36. For Allen, that's great, in my opinion, right? Uh, Bob, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, and, you know, and you have to give Carolina credit, right? You look at how you guys were able to sustain some drives. I believe if I'm looking at uh, the drive list and the possessions that you guys had, you know, and Bob, this is concerning as well for the Saints defense, 10 play drive. 17 play drive, 11 play drive, and eight in the seven play drive. That's what's concerning me. Remember uh, against the Falcons, they couldn't keep those guys off the field as well. Uh, so, and we were making <clears throat> better word bonehead mistakes on defense as well. Bob, what's your thoughts?
they did a whole lot to win the football game. 69 offensive plays to the Saints, 59 offensive plays. Wow. Uh, the yardage when it comes to passing. So Carolina had 230. Saints had a net of 300. First downs, like you said, Scott, 26 for Carolina, 23 for the Saints. Carolina was 5 for 13 on third down. The Saints were 4 for 10. That is troubling for a playoff team, in my opinion. Um, when we really come down to analyzing the the ins and outs, and we can go through the numbers all day long, this God, it has to be one of those classic NFC South rivalry matchups, right? Twelve times. Wow. Yeah. And he's in a tough position, but to miss the extra points as well as that last field goal, that's tough to watch. And you have to really think this game is very, you know, People say a game of inches, right, Bob? Uh, People say it's really a micrometer here or there, whatever. But you have to think that in this league, we've got to find some better gears because it's an epidemic (laughs) league-wide today. You know, so many teams are losing games because of the kicking game. How do they get this fixed? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, because I remember growing up, remember the NFL really, really was behind punt, pass, kick. What happened to that program? That was such a great program. <laughs> Let's make it more exciting, right? All right. Well, 
Daz, if you had to point to a couple of critical plays in the game beside the sly misses, right? Uh, what would that be, Bob? No, that's not the problem. Thank you. I wrote about it before, and I'm going to keep harping on this. The Saints win with the run first, not the pass. Run first. This version of the New Orleans Saints, the 2019 regular season version, run first, pass later. Eight of the nine wins, we have pounded the ball over 100-plus yards and won the football game. The only game we did not win uh, did not go over 100 yards and one was the Seattle game. We were at, what, 88, 87 yards, something to that nature, right? Look at uh, Murray. Murray had 64 yards on the ground with seven attempts. And McCaffrey had 22 attempts on the ground for 64 yards. Hmm. That's a telling sign, Sean Payton. Uh, but combined with Kamara and Murray, those guys had 108 yards on the ground. And that really helped to open some things up in the first half, like you said. So, Scott, when you look at uh, a couple of critical plays other than, like I said, Sly, <laughs> what would those be for you guys on uh, the Carolina side? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, not only 
this is a good solid win for the team because you notice they didn't panic uh, they they kept their cue uh, after they uh, botched calls by the officials and uh, when they called Gordon Johnson for that uh, you know pass interference I'm, I'm thinking come on guys can we just let these guys play some ball right um, you have to really really look at how this team is starting to galvanize together um, but Scott, we brought this up on the last conversation we had. You know, we've been through the the Minnesota miracle as well as the Nola no, no call. I think this team has some some um, gonads that are really still <laughs> there, Bob. Uh, and I've got to say that because I, it really shows the confidence they have in their abilities to be able to come back and win the football game. This was Drew Brees's. 50th game winning drive in his career. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely. <laughs> yeah you do you do and uh this game felt like uh creed and rocky going on the first round i mean <laughs> the uh, game I me mean, movie one because kyle allen man he was not backing down you know the kid really showed some moxie there you know and they have to appreciate his his um, performance. But, Bob, when I look at the Saints going forward, look at the Carolina Panthers going forward, Saints are 9-2, Carolina are now 5-6. and six. Saints have a stranglehold on the NFC South. All the Saints need to do in Atlanta is what? The Origami Stadium, yes. Yeah, definitely. Scott, from an outsider's perspective, and I know you guys have a a really hard way to try to get into the wild card, but if you look at the Saints compared to the other teams of the NFC, how do you rate these guys? Yeah.
<laughs> All right. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. No, no, uh, they, uh, they only got three points, right? Hold on. Yeah, it, it did produce uh, points. It was? Okay, all right. <laughs> five yards. I know we had a grand total of five yards. Yeah. No first downs. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, man, you look at these guys, if you – you do the calculations. I think McCaffrey can he comprised of forty five percent of your offense. Forty five percent. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, I think he's a poor. He's more than a Porsche. That guy's a hybrid between a Porsche and a Hummer. <laughs> he's a he's a good young talent, man. He and Kamara, man, those guys came out the same time. You look at those uh, how they perform, and when the Saints needed Kamara, Bob, they went to him, right? <laughs> D 
definitely. All right, guys, uh, game balls. Bob, who would you give the game ball for the Saints? Awesome. And you got to really look at how well he was able to open up not only the offense, but you saw how he just reached up for that grab out the sky out of nowhere. It's like he was climbing the ladder, man. It was really awesome to see. Ted again, man. I I'm not I don't wanna harp on this, but this is like the third game of the season where Ted had some uh, an obvious touchdown or a big play, he just dropped the ball. And um, it looks like uh, reoccurring issues with his cast, uh, his catching ability is coming up again. All right, uh, for Carolina. The ultimate 50-50 receiver. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but, you know, you have to give him some credit. He did get open, and a couple of times the football was underthrown by Drew Brees. All right, and as far as the game balls on the Carolina side, uh, Scott? He sure did. He sure did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I really have to explore special teams and uh, old friend. He's passed on. Rick Gailey used to say special teams must be special. And today will Lutz was special. Sly got a ways to go. All right, guys. <laughs> the short, the short bus special, right? So <laughs> All right, guys. Um, this is Kyle T. Mosley. Uh, I'm here with Bob Rose. Uh, everybody, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Scott, tell everybody how they can find you on the World Wide Web. All right. And Bobo, how can everybody follow you? <laughs> Good luck on that one. <laughs> Definitely. And I got to say this, Michael Thomas, congratulations. You now had 104 receptions on the year. Uh, the Saints defense 
I think this is the 40th straight game they haven't allowed a running back to rush over 100 yards. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah, I'm talking about with the, the, the playoffs. I know it's 37th regular season games, and that's a tremendous uh, testament to Ryan Nielsen and that defensive line coaching that he's been doing for the Saints. All right, guys, uh, don't forget, you can always follow the Saints News Network on Sports Illustrated at si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Saints, as well as you can always check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Saints News. This is Kyle T. Mosley with Bob Rose and Scott Hamilton. Scotty, thank you, man. Bob, thank you. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. And who that, baby? Take care.